Hello, hello. Today is Fed Day, Wednesday, November 1st, and the Fed announced, as well as uh, Powell still speaking, but some great market reaction that I'll talk about and get into and say how happy I am today. Good afternoon. Today is Wednesday, November 1st. My name is Adam Kahn, and I'm the Rational Investor. Hope you're all doing well. Before I forget, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, give a thumbs up, like, make some comments, tell me what you think. Um, really exciting day today. I'm glad to see the markets reacting the way they, they did. Um, I'm going to put a couple links in the description for opening an account at SoFi. You can open a checking and savings or a trading account. Um, if you deposit $10 or more, they'll give you a little bit of free money. I think they give you $25. I also opened an account for my son and I that they'll, they'll give us a little gift as well. And I appreciate the kindness and the help and the support. Um, I love seeing you guys getting involved. I love to see the channel doing well. It's really exciting for me. And thank you from the bottom of my heart. So as expected, the Fed did not raise rates, which I know we all expected that to happen. Nothing really changed, but the market reaction so far is great. We'll see what happens tomorrow. I wanted to wait a little bit before doing the video and, and see how things panned out after they spoke. Bonds seem to be easing off a bit. Stock market's going higher. And, and like I said, I mean, I don't know if you guys watched my other videos. I got pretty excited about the panic in the market the last couple of weeks. It seems like it was overextended and I hope to see some follow through. Really, I don't understand it either. I will agree with the crash bros out there. I think the rates are high. I think the prices of homes are expensive, but it seems to be going higher. The lack of inventory must be a legitimate issue, and the inflation was real. People have adjusted to the world. I know that there's high credit card debt. I also know that the foreclosure rate is beginning to increase and the default rate. I, I get all of that and know what's going on with the markets, but Everybody seems to be doing okay and adjusting to it. They're, they get used to the newer, higher expenses, whether that's going out to dinner, whether that's going to a movie, whether it's buying a car or a house. You can't separate a car, a house, or stocks from other inflationary things. It all moves in conjunction to each other. So if there is inflation and eggs get more expensive, so does the cost of a, a, a home. Just because a home is a large purchase doesn't mean it's left out of the equation. So what I think we're going to see is rates improve next year. I actually think we'll see the shorter end of the curve improve more than the longer end, and the Fed will be able to continue to unwind their balance sheet. So what I envision, and not that I'm right, so you guys have to do your own research and come up with what you think and make your own financial decisions. This is just what I think based on my background. And what I've seen is that maybe the two year and the one year and the three month CDs start to see lower interest rates. And if the Fed's able to continue to sell their bonds and maybe four and a half, five percent is reasonable for the 10 yield, you'll see the yields uninvert. And the economy will keep chugging along. I mean, even Powell said he was excited to see that we didn't have unemployment get out of control or, or stay the way that it's been. I think things are working out the way they hoped. And he'll continue to keep the markets nervous that there's opportunity to potentially raise because he doesn't want people going nuts. He doesn't want to see the markets take off. He doesn't want to see the inflation get out of hand. But I don't think it will because... The reality is our friends, our family, everybody's stretched a bit. The economy is slowing. We're not going on 10 trips and buying six cars and everything else. And, and people are feeling strapped, but they're surviving. They haven't lost jo jobs. If they've had to downsize or if they've had to back off that trip, I think that's the reality of life. And to all the crash bros out there, I see what you're seeing. I see the data points, but where you're wrong is... People are doing okay and they're surviving. There isn't going to be some big collapse like we saw in 2008. We learned from that. The, the builders did not build too many homes, which is why we have a lack of inventory. In fact, I think the auto manufacturers learned the same thing, that they don't want to buy for build for too much demand 
they try to build for the demand. They got a little ahead of themselves because the demand was excessive. But now that it's slowing, I'm guessing once they get rid of some of the inventory that they've overbuilt, they back off. And I think the higher interest rates has balanced it out. They're making good profits. They'll get these cars that they built sold. And then you'll have the same thing in the auto industry and everything else. You know, I was talking to a friend about something that amazes me. You know, I think about pre-COVID and you go to Target and they've got mugs and all of these goofy gadgets that nobody really wants on some bin that you can buy for 99 cents a piece. Well, that doesn't really exist anymore. I couldn't believe I went to get an anniversary card for my wife. The inexpensive card is like $5. Now, don't get me wrong. I think part of that is because they have all the electronic cards and everything else. And maybe not a lot of people use the paper cards. But these are things they used to try to get rid of that they don't need to try to get rid of anymore. There seems to be a good balance of having the right supply and demand, which is economics 101. And I see that throughout every industry, including the housing industry. So I think we're going to have a bit of a correction right now, which is why I say in housing, I think right now is the time to buy. Full disclosure, I do mortgages. That is not a self-serving comment because I would love to see a crash. I would love to see lower prices and lower interest rates because I would be super busy. But that's not what I think is happening. I think what's happening is there's a lack of inventory. People still want to own homes. When, when I have clients, they are well qualified with good credit, good income, steady jobs. And they've adjusted to where prices are, and they can afford those payments. Maybe we have some foreclosure come to the market, but that's a natural ebb and flow of a market. That is not a crash. A crash is we gave out these crazy loans. People lied about their income. They lied about their assets. All they needed was to have decent credit. We then put them in adjustable rate mortgages that quadrupled when they season. Well, all of that stuff does not exist this time. As opposed to that, you have a bunch of people pinned into 30-year mortgages at sub-3 and sub-4% interest rates that really aren't going anywhere. They're more likely to stay where they are or possibly even rent out a house if they need to move, which is why I think we've seen the rent softening, which means housing softening. And if people are struggling, I think we're more likely to get similar to other countries where you have more multi general gener uh, the, 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 excuse me more multi generational homes like maybe mom and dad stay with their kids as they get older because yeah it gets more unaffordable i also think you'll see a deviation between the wealthy and the not wealthy and that'll continue to get worse and worse cuz here's the problem in terms of that and there's really no good fix once you get over the hump of having enough money that your money starts creating more money to be able to survive on that, well, that just continues to grow. And if you still work where you're making extra on top of all of that, there's really no way to stop that, where the people who are behind that curve are constantly trying to get caught up and it's really hard to get to that place. So you have people who have so much that they can invest it, and those investments are growing at a faster rate than they're even spending it, and it just pushes further and further and further away. Well, I don't see a great fix for that, and I think that's why you continue to see the super wealthy be able to own more and more uh, of everything. So I'm just excited that the Fed announced, the markets reacted the way they have, and, and hopefully they have some follow through next week. Um, I would suggest saving and saving and saving. It doesn't matter whether you put it in stocks, in the real estate, into collectibles. I just think it's a good thing to try to save some of your money. Uh, same thing. You guys need to make your own decisions, do your own research. Maybe tomorrow I'll talk about some stock picks that are some of my favorite. Um, I really like the market. I just didn't want to say it because it's already had a nice move up. And boy, now like I wish everybody got in last week. So have a great day. Enjoy the first of the month. Um, thumbs up, like, subscribe, and tell me what you think.
Bye-bye.